talk about some of the ways that Arrow, besides having a website where people can do resources, talk about some of the programs and things that you're doing to build the network, to build out the visibility of the movement. Well, of course, we have an annual conference. Right. That's going to be coming up in June 21st to 23rd. Peter's basically coordinating that. Mm -hmm. And people come from all over to that conference. And so that's one of our things. Another is for people who want to start new alternatives, we have an online course. Mm -hmm. And we have helped start over 100 schools that we know of. I mean, there's probably a, a hundreds, actually. Mm -hmm. Schools and programs. You say school, we kind of change the name. It used to be school starters. Now it's alternative starters. Yeah. Because an awful lot of them are homeschool resource centers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons for that is there's more freedom for people who are homeschoolers than there are for people starting schools in mm -hmm. many states and countries. Yeah, yeah. So the easiest way is to say, we're a homeschool resource center, you know. There's really, at this point, hardly any difference. Yeah. And so that's another thing that we do. We do networking. We put people together, who, sometimes very often introducing people in their same communities that didn't yeah. know each each other we do that a lot mm -hmm. and so so basically we, we promote the idea of of this approach to education and really it's just getting back to the way people learn i think yeah i yeah. think that we use the paradigm that children and people are are natural learners mm-hmm and build on that rather than say, oh, we have all the answers you're going to need to be uh, successful in life. Just, you know, listen to us and then regurgitate it on the tests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would add to a lot of what Jerry just said. Of course, he mentioned the conference and that'll be in Minneapolis this year. So we're in, you know, the middle of the country. So everyone will have access to it. One of the things that we like to do at the conference is, of course, you know, we have a schedule of activities, we have a schedule of presentations and, and all of that. But I think really the main, the main hub, the backbone of the conference is the networking and the mm -hmm. conversations that pop up and, and, you know, even just, you know, people kind of get together at the conference and say, hey, I'm interested in this and hey, I'm interested in this too. And then, you know, some of them have developed friendships that have lasted decades you know, because, mm -hmm. because they've met at the conference or they, they wound up working together or they started, like Jerry said, homeschool resources, schools, organizations, even there's uh, a few organizations that are in existence now that really got their start at an arrow conference. Yep. Um, so, so I think there's that. And then we also are working really closely with people who want to start alternatives. So, you know, we're targeting a couple of areas. And we're really, you know, working a little bit more of the um, kind of in-person boots on the ground idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the course can do a lot and there's a lot that, that, that people can get from the course. This takes it a little bit, gives it another layer to it. Yeah. And so it's kind of that in-person, you know, doing visits, but also doing consultations. We just got asked by a couple of folks who want some help you know, with doing their 5013C application. Oh, right, yeah. So, so things like that, I think that people look at us for resources and, you know, but again, you know, like Jerry mentioned, the networking, but it's also, again, you know, making connections, building relationships, bringing people together, you know, getting the word out. We have social media presence, you know, we have, we actually have a webinar series, which uh, we'll be rebooting next week. Um, Jerry just did a podcast. So, so it's a lot of ways that we reach out and get the word out and, and get people plugged in. We also, we met with some folks that are working out of the Harvard uh, Graduate School of Education, and mm -hmm. they're working on a program to, uh, to basically get paid internships into schools, uh, into schools that can take, uh, take advantage of that kind of idea. There's a little yeah. bit more to it than that, but that's kind of the, the overall crux of it. And so we, we, we work with a lot of different, you know, uh, people or individuals who are dialing into this kind of learner, this learner directed idea, you know, really looking at how to advance that. So, so we do a lot of, there's a lot of, so just tension, uh, you know, 
tentacles, I would say that, you know, go off of mm -hmm. the uh, things that we're doing. So. Right on. So right a, couple on. More, a couple more things is we put out a weekly free e-newsletter. Oh, right on. And that goes to 15,000 people every week. Mm hmm give them the latest news for what's going on in educational alternatives around the world. People send job ads to us. Uh, they, they send a, a announcements of special activities that they're having and so on. So it's used for this kind of general networking. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we have the number one website in, for, in alternative education on Google. Right on. Uh, and so people write to me. I get about about 100 emails a day from people who are writing to me from the website. Uh, hmm. So these are some of the things that we do. Right on. Right on. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.